Okay, for those on the phone, we're going to start this podcast over, um, the actual recording of it, so that we can make this sound decent when we publish it out there. So, Okay, thanks for joining another episode of Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Oh, sorry, I can't say hello, hello. I'm <laughs> eating eggs with peanut butter on it. And if you're interested in that, you'll have to head over to our Facebook page because we just recorded a little challenge and you just have to watch the video. Yeah, so that was our first take on what we were doing today is the egg challenge from last week. So that's accomplished. The only challenge we have left is John making mayonnaise. So Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let's not put a, you know, any deadlines on that or anything. <laughs> well, yeah, because we would have we would Maybe have definitely like not. Maybe New Year's resolution. <laughs> Yeah. It's only been going on for almost a year. <laughs> so today's podcast, we are going to uh, talk about our next adventure. So John and I have decided that we are going to branch out and do a cookbook. I uh, want to try to reach out to as many people and help as many people as we can. So our first cookbook let's, is... Let's be clear. I mean, that was the biggest feedback we got. And we have all the surveys of all the people we talk to. Everybody says they just want default things that, that are super easy and that it's too complicated. And so that was the challenge. We took it on. And we're going to talk today about uh, we kind of did an intro last week where we did a deep dive. <clears throat> Sorry, two weeks ago. We did a deep dive. And this is going to be a little more high level, but we're going to talk kind of what, uh, you know, some of our go-to dishes are that are super simple and how easy they are. And we're going to make some notes and then hopefully we'll have uh, these available for you um, in the show notes, right? Does that, did we actually say we do that? At least have a draft. There'll be an ugly version. Yeah. Yeah, we could, we could definitely put, uh, put a draft in the show notes. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So our new cookbook is going to be titled... Two weeks, easy meals. So the whole concept again is just to try to give you um, two weeks bo- two weeks worth of dinners that are quick and easy, no crazy uh, ingredients required, not a lot of work. Um, John and I have talked before; we both work, so we try to make these as easy as possible because neither one of us want to spend all night behind uh, behind the stove. So. Um, you want to go ahead and start with a couple of yours, John? Sure. So I talked about the loaded cauliflower um, two weeks ago, so I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about that. But I will say that um, I did get a couple questions on how lackadaisical I was. Is that a, is that a word? Well, anyway, <laughs> how kind of just generic I was. So I just want to point out that there was two distinct versions of that. One I do with frozen cauliflower. It's like my... Uh, backup where I pre-cook it and then that cooks fast and then I believe I never even talked about temperature or anything but that's because I always do it kind of like as a addition so if there's something in the oven whatever temperature I'm cooking that at I kind of throw it in there too because pretty much at that point the cauliflower is cooked all you have to do is heat it up so then really the second piece so the second direction would be on using the raw um, pre-cauliflowered uh, basically cauliflower you get from, uh, from uh, well, I personally get it at Costco, but anyway. Like, that, a, like that, a head or the that, florets? Well, no, no, I'm saying it comes pre Oh, pre-rice. pre-rice. Pre-cal- I said pre-cauliflower. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. That's why we have you guys here to correct. <laughs> uh, we have free, pre-rice. So, uh, but uh, definitely that one is more, is more particular. You do have to cook it for the full time and everything. So go through and you look and you kind of see the two different instructions, kind of, Kind of, it'll be a little more detailed. So if you look at the, at the one from two weeks ago, you'll kind of understand a little bit more why there's more detail for, for the book. So I call that my kind of companion dish. Um, I always do it early in the morning, early in the morning, early in the week, and then and then always uh, heat it up throughout throughout the week. So the next, uh, so so the real one I want to talk about is the the um, low carb ish or keto ish shepherd's pie. And uh, I, I do have two versions of this too, but really shepherd's pie is one of the things that my wife loves, and she challenged me to like she makes it, you know, the, the old-fashioned way, for lack of a better term. 
I prefer lamb, but you know you can make the choice um, on the uh, different uh, the, the meats you use, but basically you, you just get the ground meat. And uh, again, no surprise here, the base is the base. I mean, it's basically the meat, the onions, all the, all the tomato sauce and everything. You can choose whether or not you want to put a vegetables in it, optional vegetables. Carrots aren't really keto, but uh, carrots, um, peas, um, you, those are all kind of common things you'll see in shepherd's pies. So you got to decide you know, how, how strict you want to be with uh, the vegetables if you add them. Again, they're completely optional. You could leave the vegetables out if you want. They're more for color. And then uh, there's uh, nothing that much different with the top mashed beef. Much like you would do potatoes, uh, you just do that with the cauliflower. So now I've talked about two things that have cauliflower, and because of, if you listened to last week's, you'll know cauliflower does have a taste. Uh, <laughs> You do want to take the frozen cauliflower and cook it. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I always use frozen cauliflower when we're doing the, uh, the shepherd's pie. Definitely add the butter and the heavy cream because that's where you get the creaminess to to make it uh, more like mashed potatoes. And remember, you don't you don't want to overcook the cauliflower <laughs> and you don't want to whip it too much. So those right. Were, those were the pro tips from uh, culinary arts <clears throat> from the culinary arts. So there, there's a, there's my uh, uh, shepherd's pie, and the great thing about that, it's all one dish. Uh, you pretty much uh, you can brown it in the same. I brown it in the same dish. I'm putting it in the oven, and and so you just want to make sure that you use a, the dish that you can do that with if you're going to, and it's super easy. You pretty much brown the meat, throw the throw the rest of the base stuff right in there, and uh, then you just put the cauliflower on top and pretty much warm it all up in the oven. So that's super easy, and you're really pretty much only just dirt, dirty in two dishes. So, all right, so what's next up on your? So my first one um, is taco bake. So I tried to uh, go through all of the meals that I, that I prepare regularly, but I wanted to kind of do um, a broad uh, array of them. So I've got some Italian dishes. I've got some uh, Mexican dishes. But this one is the taco bake. So um, it's, it's a, a casserole, and you'll find that that's what I do a lot of. I either do crock pot or casserole just because it's easier. Uh, so you would, you would take your, your beef, um, and you, you could either do beef and pork combination. Um, I've done it with just pork, but basically whatever ground meat you have. Uh, ground beef, I do taco seasoning. I make my own, uh, so I can throw a recipe to what I use for taco seasoning out on our website, so that you guys have access to it if you want. Super simple, but yeah, we need to check that as much fajitas. I use the same same thing. I think it's ninety-five percent the same as mine. Yeah, yeah, and I mean this way, you know what's in it. You know you're not getting any added sugar or any of that stuff. So. Um, but this has eggs in it. It's got uh, heavy whipping cream. It's got garlic powder and uh, then shredded cheese. So with and with the shredded cheese again, uh, in general, I use you know like a mix of cheese. But I made this last night, and my husband and I are uh, leaving for vacation next week, so I didn't want a bunch of food sitting around. I just went in the refrigerator and all of the open cheese that I already had, that's what I put in this. So it had a quite a array. It was a a big blend. Um, But again, it turned out great. So um, I throw it into uh, a 9 by 13 baking dish. And, um, you know, once I brown the hamburger, I just put a layer of uh, hamburger on the bottom. And then... Well, with the, I put the seasoning in the, the hamburger, layer it on the bottom, and then um, mix everything else, throw it on top, top it with cheese, put it in the oven. It's extremely simple to assemble, and it really is very yummy. Yeah, and I absolutely can't believe I haven't done that yet because we've talked about that before and you've given me that recipe yeah. also six months ago probably and I haven't done it because we do a Taco Tuesday and uh, which was one of the ones I, I talked about last time so probably the exact same uh, within reason we, we also make our own uh, and then I uh, our own taco seasoning slash fajita seasoning 
and then uh, <clears throat> I just take leftover chicken. If I don't have chicken, I just brown the meat. And we do the we do a basically everything is a, a salad for me. And then sometimes my kids do shells. I pretty much just load the greens right on the plate and then put all the taco toppings, you know, so we'll go through three avocados and just lump it all on there. So everything but that fancy flaky shell that you'd get. Um, yep. And I, I never liked the dressing. Um, I never put dressing on my salad. Uh, I know some people put uh, ranch dressing on their taco salad. So if I had some family members who wanted that, I would just buy a healthy version of ranch because I'm lazy. Can't even. Yeah, I make my own. I know. Figured. <laughs> um, but yeah, with the, with that fajita salad, sounds like um, like that would be a good thing, or a, kind of a, a good segue with this. So the toppings that I use for the taco bake, you can do like shredded lettuce uh, with it, but I generally do um, sour cream, avocados, some tomatoes. So once it comes out of the oven, I just put it on the plate and put those toppings on it, and again, it tastes just like tacos. Yeah, and uh, kind of a fat up tip. Um, you were talking uh, about sometimes how I need to add more fat into mine. Um, it's very easy for me to just take MTC oil, MTC oil, and just put it right on top of of that that taco meat, and it's what I tend to do. Especially if I'm trying, if I depend on what I have for lunch, if I if I feel like I need something extra. I Is that after you've finished cooking it that you've I, had it? You know, I've never, so don't, I have no, I have no uh, expertise around this, but for some reason I always put MTC oil on after. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know if I, I mean, I'm just assuming I don't know what the flash point is on MTC oil, but yeah, I, don't know. I guess we could look into it. But, but uh, yeah, I also put it in dressing. Some segment. Oh. Um, sort of guess on your quantity. I, uh, yeah, I definitely guess. I do not even dirty a spoon for that. I, <laughs> I mean, I've no. I'm sure I have aged berries. <clears throat> and you got to be careful with the <clears throat> oil. Of course, if you're dumping that stuff on there, you're adding a lot of calories. So. Yep. Um, but the uh, my other go-to meal that I absolutely love, and I think I talked about this when we talked about emergency meals, and that's uh, baked salmon. Uh, it's kind of silly to say I actually need a recipe for this because I really don't, but there was enough people who asked me, uh, uh, you know, what I put on there that I do put a little something on there. Um, I have a mister. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but uh, the the brand I have is Miso. You can just dump um, uh, the olive. You can use olive oil, or for me, I use avocado oil. You put it right in there, and then you, like, smash the the head down and it, it pumps it. And then oh, so like a spritzer? It. Yeah, it's like miss it. So I okay. missed it. And then um, I just put, uh, if you're, depending on your feelings, um, you can put straight up soy sauce and just brush it on the top or you can use liquid aminos either way, depending on your preference if, if uh, soy bothers you or not. And I, that's it. Just put it in a pan. Keep the key to salmon is, is a, a low heat. So I do 275 for like 15 minutes. As soon as you see that the white stuff starting to form on the outside of the salmon, and I pull it out, uh, I err on the side of a little less done, but that's me. Everyone's got their own opinion, but that is my emergency go-to meal. And if you hadn't realized, uh, usually is has the cauliflower big stuff. On the <laughs> yeah, so I as well do a, a salmon as an emergency, and we've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Always salmon in the in the freezer just in case. Um, I do a little bit different with mine. So I use a air fryer. So I put it in the air fryer uh, 400 degrees for about 18 minutes. And I usually cook four salmon steaks just because, again, I over, not overcook. It sounds like I'm overcooking. Them. I cook more than what we would eat in for the evening so that we would both have enough for uh, lunch the next day. Yeah, and that's a common theme. Uh, yeah. All of this, we, we always cook over, and that's why we don't actually say two weeks and then include lunches because we just assume that you're going to be eating leftovers throughout the week. Yep. Um, so, yeah, so I throw the salmon into the air fryer, and while that is cooking, I actually do a cream spinach. So um, I always use frozen package of spinach, 
throw it in the microwave to just thaw it, um, and then drain all of the, or uh, squeeze some of the water out of it. Throw it in a pan, turn it on medium heat till the water boils out, and then um, I mix in Parmesan cheese, sour cream, garlic powder, onion powder, and then salt and pepper. Uh, when the salmon comes out, I will um, usually take the spinach and just do a smear over, and then that's what our meal is. So we okay. love that. You know, scope creep. I'm the worst at scope creep, but man, that sounds that sounds good. The, uh, the, we do something similar that's even more lazy than that because we do it in the crock pot. I should totally put that in there. <clears throat> Mark, should put come a, for the next one. Put a few, few uh, veggie add-ons in the back, maybe. Bonus. He's go creep. Dang it. All right, so I'm next up with um, a chili replacement. We, I wouldn't say that I love chili, but it, chili is something that we had had multiple times. And uh, I can't remember what website it is, but there, uh, I think it's Paleo OMG. There was, there was this tomato sauce that I, I used to, when I was really early, early into to eating differently, uh, I would just dump it on vegetables. So whenever there was anything going on at the house, it was like my emergency. So I switched that to the, this meat lover's chili. And I'm not going to go into a ton of de- detail on the meat lover's chili, but basically um, I get the, uh, with our cow, we get the one that's, I think it's called stew meat. And I just brown that in and uh, I, sorry, I don't even brown it. I just put it in there. This is in a crock pot. Uh, <clears throat> two to three ground ground meats. You can use anything from beef to lamb, chicken, pork, whatever. An onion chopped up, two bell peppers, some celery cloves, and then similar, the same chili spices that you would assume, you know, cumin, all that stuff. And, uh, and the uh, option, if you want, is to throw in uh, some uh, fourth cup of red wine. I never add the red wine, and it t- tastes just fine. And that stuff is fantastic, man. I can put it on anything. Put it on eggs, kind of like you would, you know, put peanut butter on there. Uh, and uh, I just, man, I, I just eat that that first night and eat uh, back to your topping on your taco bake. You can put anything in that cheese. You can throw some tomatoes on top if you want avocado, um, all of that stuff. And again, like I mentioned on some of the other stuff, if I'm wanting a little fat up, I'll, I'll put a little extra oil and just stir it in and it goes right in there. Right. It's a little more fatty because you don't bother browning any of the stuff ahead of time. You just kind of throw it all in there. So if you have a fattier uh, um, ground meat, then you, you would need to do that. But yeah, meat lovers chili. And there's no beans in it, obviously. <laughs> so that's why it's called beet lovers over there. So my next one that I decided to put in here is a shrimp broccoli alfredo. Now, I know not, not everybody likes shrimp. I have also made this with chicken, so I will include the variation um, in case you're not a seafood person. But... We eat this quite frequently. Um, shrimp, again, is one of those lean meats, so I tried to figure out somehow to, to fatten it up, and perfect. My husband loves this. Um, and it's really simple. I, I usually buy frozen uh, popcorn, or I think they're popcorn shrimp, a little bitty shrimp from Costco, and then I put those in a pan just to heat them up and get all the water off of them. And while that's doing, um, or while that's cooking, I throw broccoli in the microwave and steam that. And then in a large pan, I melt uh, cream cheese, my butter, heat up the whipping cream. Um, Once all of that is melted, I throw in the shrimp and the broccoli, and then I incorporate uh, the rest of the cheese along with the garlic powder, onion powder, um, and then top that with Parmesan cheese heat it up until all of it is melted. And um, you can serve this over zoodles or spaghetti squash if you uh, wanted to. Or again, you can substitute the shrimp for um, chicken. Probably you could substitute it for pretty much any meat, but those two kind of seem like a better choice for an Alfredo sauce. But Yeah, if you don't have a zoodler right now, if you're listening to this live, uh, Amazon's got all their 
O X O. What's that? Is that whatever the black the black handled stuff is? All mm-hmm. the stuff I noticed they've got one and really nice ones. Oh, like forty percent off right now. Nice, good. Tip. Just a random tip. Good plug. I mean, you already have like five or six of them. But... <laughs> no, I now I only have I only have one. I gave the other one to Javier. <laughs> oh, okay. there we go. One for each hand. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm up. Uh, this one's uh, like you were talking about the variations. You could you could probably do this with anything, but I prefer chicken, and they're ginger lime chicken bites. <clears throat> and the reason I do bites is because it just goes over better with my kids. I mean, you could probably do this with the thighs also, but um, to make it super simple and easy, um, just take some. I just take frozen chicken breasts out of the freezer um, in the morning and set them out. And then uh, cube them, so, you know, like basically in more to the uh, one inch by one inch. And then, then I brown them in coconut oil. And then the sauce is super simple. It's just a fourth cup lime juice. Uh, back to the soy sauce, you can use a, a couple tablespoons, either soy sauce or liquid aminos. And then you can control the oil. Um, that you can a couple of teaspoons, or you can go higher depending on what you what you're looking for. On that, <clears throat> it doesn't. It just makes it a little little bit <clears throat> a little bit thinner if you add a little extra oil. And then just some grated ginger. Pro tip there: you can keep ginger in the freezer and just microplane it right in uh, from frozen. And then a clove of garlic. And <clears throat> I'm lazy, so I just use the minced uh, right out of the. Did you guys know you can get minced garlic that comes in like a squeezed tube like ketchup? Okay, everyone's shaking their heads. Oh, I was new to me. I absolutely love it. And then if your kids are, if you kids have, if you have kids and you have to have something sweet, obviously you could at that point add like a teaspoon of honey or something if you wanted to. I, I leave that out. But man, just a pro tip when you're eating this, you give the ch- when you when you serve up your kids. You, you get the spoon and you don't go too low because you just want the chunks of the chicken so that when you get there, you can scrape the bottom and it's got all that <laughs> gooey, just fantastic goodness. Hmm, I'm going to have to try this one. Oh, man, it's fantastic. And the garlic... It's super easy, too. Garlic <laughs> as well. You can buy them um, in the frozen section that are minced and already in little frozen cubes. I've seen that. I've seen it where it's minced in, in butter, too. Yeah. There's those flavors. They do too. onions like that, too. But <clears throat> I never had... Uh, there always seems to be additives in that, so I've always steered away. So maybe I need to relook. Maybe there's some better... They, maybe yeah, I'd have to check what brand I have, but... And then op- options on topping, you can top that with anything. I think traditionally, if you got a dish like that, it would be the uncooked uh, uh, sesame seeds, but... Ch- uh, we we have chives at our house that that are still still good, so we, we I just take the scissors to some chives, and uh, you can also do uh, raw cashews um, go on the top too. If you want to be a little Thai, get a little Thai influence in there. And yeah, so this is a, a ironically enough you know, Thai a, a recipe that my mom and my sister picked up when they, we were in Thailand and went to a cooking school, and we've kind of. Uh, uh, definitely modify it just a tad because we don't do the uh, do the uh, uh, honey. But uh, just a side note, it's super fast with chicken breast. That's why we do that. If you're going to do thighs and everything, you do have to cook it significantly longer because you got to you got to get the uh, chicken chicken done. So that's why I do the chicken breast for speed and laziness. <laughs> so much easier. So, um, crock pots, yeah. Before I, before we move, do you do uh, drops of stevia, like those alcoholic drops? Yeah, sometimes. If, if you were, if you were, if you're wanting it sweeter and you didn't want to use the honey, you could put like a two or three drops of stevia in there too. Yeah. Throwing out some options. If, if you're, I personally don't like the sweet stuff. I've kind of gotten away from it. When I have it, then it makes me crave it more. So I've. Yeah. Stop even the I would probably, um, if it were me, I would probably use like a little packet of Trevia uh, or okay. some erythritol, only because stevia sometimes have, has a bitterness. And with ginger, I think that might actually pull the bitter out of the stevia. 
so I probably would steer clear. Basically, what you're saying is I shouldn't volunteer things I've never tried. <laughs> well, no, I mean it's a good alternative, but just I mean just throwing that out to people like stevia isn't always that stable when you're cooking with it. Gotcha. Now, if you're using it in a drink or something like that, um, it's not as bad. But I have not found great luck with stevia when I cook with it. Erythritol is better um, under temperature, I, in my opinion. Are but you talking straight stevia. Um, so I've noticed I, that, uh, that there's a lot of blend. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, so I don't use, well, if I used a blend, it would be a blend with that and erythritol. And I would consider, that's, that's what I'm talking I would about. consider that in the same category as erythritol. Okay. Um, but if it's just straight stevia, that's where you have, I mean, and again, lots of people use it. Um, but I just caution because there's, Sometimes it doesn't turn out in a recipe that great, for me, anyway. I don't generally have an issue with it in drinks, but sometimes in, in cooked things, I feel like it does come out better. So, um, The next one that I put in here is the Italian beef, and I think we talked about this, so I'll just, like, high level. Um, it's, it's chuck roast, and I use that just for the fat content of the meat. Um, I put apple cider vinegar, onions, garlic powder, uh, pepperoncini peppers, salt and pepper to taste. I cover it with um, about five tablespoons of butter. I chunk them into one tablespoon chunks and then throw it in a crock pot and that's it. Um, I put it in there on high for four hours or I'll put it in low for eight hours. About halfway through, I go in and, and shred up the meat and then all of the flavors are incorporated throughout. But that one is one of the easiest yeah. that I make. We do that too. You just, you just brought it up first. Yeah. And then when I serve it, um, I mean, you could serve it if you're John and you eat cauliflower a lot. You could serve it over a bed of cauliflower. I think that would probably be good. Um, how I browned it. <laughs> cauliflower person. For the record, yeah. I prefer asparagus. <laughs> he just eats a lot of cauliflower. Um, but then I just top it with cheese. So sometimes I'll use provolone, sometimes uh, Munster. Uh, sometimes mozzarella just depends on what's in the fridge and what I'm feeling that day. So, but it's super quick and easy, and it's like it, I, especially on cold winter days here, and you're busy. Throw it in there in the crock pot before you leave for work, and it's great. Well, I, no, I like normal. Um, totally hijacked a couple of those earlier, so I've got through my list uh, faster than you. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, it's not really a recipe, but I just want to call out. I've mentioned this a whole bunch of times, so I probably should kind of document how I do it. It's different every time, but if you wanted to uh, use a fancy name, you could call it a vegetable souffle or whatever. But uh, basically, whenever I do that one mass prep, it's usually evolving around when I cook bacon. I just take, you know, a half a head of cabbage if I have it, you know, onion. Um, we have turnips in our garden, and I'm not a huge fan of turnips, so I tend to use them in something like this. But you can even do bro the stalks of the broccoli or the stalks of the cauliflower. You just run them through the food processor so they're riced, kind of like you would do with the, cau with the cauliflower. I talked about that before. And man, some butter and avocado oil and saute that in a pan. It's crazy easy. And if you have bacon fat because you just cook bacon, then you just cook it in the in the bacon grease. And man, that stuff is just liquid deliciousness because it's almost pre-chewed even. How's that for a, <laughs> how's that for a disgusting <laughs> Nice. So, again, it's winter here. If you're listening in the area in Illinois, it's cold and ugly. So soup is a great... Um, a great thing for people to do. I am not a big fan of runny soup. I like more of a chowder or uh, a stew kind of soup. So any of them that I put in there is going to be thick and hearty. So um, one of my favorite soups to, to make and to eat is a chicken broccoli uh, cheese soup. So it, it actually originated as, I don't know, probably five different recipes, and I just started combining things together. Uh, but this one, again, is done in the crock pot, super easy. Um, four to six chicken thighs. I put them in frozen a lot of times just because I forget to take things out of the freezer the day before. Um, I do about four cups of uh, broccoli florets, 
and four cloves of garlic. You can cut back the garlic if you are not a big garlic fan, but I love it. Um, I generally do about three and a half cups of broth, and most of the time I try to use my own broth that I have made, uh, beef broth. Sometimes I will use chicken broth as well, um, but the beef broth gives it a really, really um, nice, rich flavor. Then I put in um, a cup of heavy whipping cream. I do three to four cups of shredded cheese, and again, I use whatever cheese is in my refrigerator. So if I have only uh, shredded cheddar, that's what I use, but if I have different varieties, and I, again, I shred my own, so whatever blocks of cheese, I'll just throw that in there. And then um, just before it is done, probably about an hour before, I'll add about a cup of Parmesan cheese to the mix. And um, I generally do, um, again, four hours on high or eight hours on low. And about halfway through, I'll go in and start shredding the meat so that it's all incorporated. But it makes a lot, so you can eat it that week if you want, or you could eat it for a couple of meals and then freeze it for later, but it does make quite a bit, that, that, that recipe with those uh, ingredients. So, um, one of the other ones that I have, and I love this one, um, it's a Cuban stew, so it's going to be kind of along the lines of your, um, your chili, but it does have a spice uh, flair to it. So, again, I use chuck roast. And I do that for the fat content and apple cider vinegar. And for anybody who doesn't know why I do that, um, apple cider vinegar will break down the fibers of the meat, so your meat is a lot more tender when you use it uh, when you add those two ingredients together. I do one can of uh, diced tomatoes with green chilies. You can put more in there if you want, but it um, if Sometimes I will put a second can in, but I'll drain the liquid off of it, again, just because I don't care that much for the, the runny stew. I do uh, dried onion flakes, garlic powder. I cut up red and yellow bell peppers, and I usually do about half, um, a quarter to a half of each of those and put in there. Um, I put salt, cumin, coriander, oregano, chili powder, and black pepper. And again, throw everything in the crock pot and cook it on high for four hours, low for eight hours, halfway through, shred your meat. I, you, I generally top that as well with some sour cream and um, avocado, but you could do any ingredient. But that is one of the, um, the best things that I have for winter time. I don't do it a lot in the summer. I don't know why. It's a crock pot. I suppose I could. But for me, we do, we do eat that a lot in the winter. So... The last one I have um, is my cheeseburger casserole. This one truly is one of the ones that I, this is one of the first recipes that I made when I started keto, and um, we absolutely love it. So I brown uh, beef. You can use beef, pork, whatever you choose, um, but just do a pound of ground beef or ground meat. I do a, ground, a pound of bacon, uh, garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper. I take eight eggs and um, mix in, well, after I brown all of that, or while it's browning, I mix the eggs and the heavy cream and um, uh, tomato paste. And then you just mix all of that together in a uh, 9 by 13 pan throw it in the oven, and I put, uh, sometimes I put mushrooms in there, sometimes onions, sometimes I, or most of the time I cut up uh, pickles, and I throw that in there. So those are, um, that's really a great dish. Again, it's quick, so if you are on, you know, if you've got company coming and you're they're unexpected and you don't know what the heck you're going to feed them, this is a great thing, and it does go far, so... Again, I top it with avocado, uh, mustard, mayo, shredded lettuce, and tomatoes. So anything you would put on a burger, I generally would serve it with this. So. All right. So just a quick recap on the um, some actionable steps out of this. Obviously, we're not we didn't give you enough information to go out and do these, but we probably hopefully had some ideas in there that you could pick a few of these recipes that we talked about 
um, head over to ketoneandcorner.com, uh, find them, uh, or click on the show notes for this one. Again, um, the point is that you should try some of those. It's like the first time you start driving a car. You're nervous, you don't know what to do, and the more you do it, the more you get used to it. So find some, get comfortable with those, find some more, get comfortable with those, because the point is uh, we want to try to give you an overview so that you can actually start to change some of the meals that you're doing. And uh, we do have an ask this time. We've, we've, we've gotten zero reviews on the podcast, and we never asked for that. But So if you think about it and you're in iTunes, uh, head over to the Ketonian Corner and give us a review. That'd be fantastic. I don't think we really realize how much that uh, makes us show up in the searches higher. So, yeah. So, social socialness. Yeah. So, Facebook again. We did this egg experiment, uh, videotaped it. That's going to be published out on our Facebook page today, and. Um, so be on the lookout for our cookbook as well, guys, and hopefully you'll like this and we can we can provide more and provide more help. All right. Thanks. Thanks.